In this video, we will cover the steps needed to do a quick install. Step 1. Setup and Startup. First, remove the unit from the box and remove all packaging from the tank. Next, connect the optional overflow to floor drain. Note, the drain hose is not included and it is optional, but is not required to be hooked up. Next, we'll connect the source and return hoses to the PEX pipes. Note that the hoses come out in two rows and are marked with arrows, indicating flow into and out of the tank. First, trim the hoses and PEX pipes as needed to make connecting neat and easy. You may want to leave some slack to allow for ease of moving the tank. To connect the hoses, Insert the PEX pipe into the blue hose. Slip the clamp onto the hose. Tighten the clamp over where they connect. Then, tighten with a pair of pliers. Now, we're going to connect the long blue hoses on each end of the tank to your water heater. The blue hose on the right side connects cold water into the water heater. The one on the left side connects warm water from the heater to the tank. Note that the blue hoses hook to the top of the electrical heaters and at the bottom of gas heaters. We recommend using clamps to secure the hoses onto the nozzles. Step two, connecting your thermostat. First, we'll route the thermostat wires. Just below the middle of the green control board is a hole to pull the thermostat wires through. We recommend giving yourself enough slack in these wires to not only reach the front of Hug Hydronic's tank, but also to move the tank by 12 to 18 inches. Next, gently pull out the 12-pin wire connector from the bottom center of the control board. For each thermostat, we're going to connect the wires. Strip the end of the thermostat wires. If you have one, stick the white wire in the connector for the appropriate thermostat zone number. Then, tighten the little screw and turn to the right, as tight as it will easily go. This should hold the wire securely and make the electrical connection possible. The red wire will go in one of the power terminals. Tighten as with the white wire. Do not plug the connector back into the control board yet. If you're installing a smart thermostat, there's one more step you need to do. First, you'll need to remove jumper JP43, the one above the power section on the control board. Then, strip three wires from the thermostat wires. These are the red, white, and blue or black wire. Connect the white wire to the thermostat zone you wish to connect it to. The red wire goes into the power terminal R. Then, the black or blue line 
goes into a common terminal. Do not plug the 24 VAC power supply into the outlet until it is time to power up. Now we're ready to fill the tank. Pour water or water glycol mixture into the tank until it is between the full and low mark. Note, we recommend deionized or distilled water. Pure water is also the cheapest option and has the best heat transferability. However, you will need to note what your uses are. Each 300-foot PEX loop holds about 3 gallons of fluid. The tank holds about 8 gallons in addition to the fluid in the loops. Not all of your fluid will fit in the tank at first. You will be adding more fluid as you purge the loops. Step 4. Purging. First, open the control board cover and verify the thermostat connector is unplugged from the control board. Then, plug in the tank power supply into the nearby 120 volt outlet. Turn on the power supply switch. Now I'm going to walk you through how to purge the air out of your heater and pipes. Place a spare jumper on the purge pins for pump 10 on the control board to purge the heat source hoses first. The pump light should become bright orange. Let the pump run until gurgling sounds in the water tank cease. This might take several minutes. Repeat the purging for each pump that is in use. And a reminder, only purge one pump at a time. The water level in the tank will drop during this process, so add more water glycol to the tank as needed. Step 5. Settings. First, power up the heat source and set its temperature. 120 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit is a typical setting. If you have a smart thermostat, plug in that power supply now. Now, plug in the thermostat connector and turn up thermostats to call for heat. Each active thermostat should show a blue zone light at the top of the board, above the thermostat connector. All pumps should be active, each indicated by a green light getting brighter. Now, let's assign the thermostat zones for each pump by moving the jumper to the correct zone. Each pump has its own section of the control board, labeled 1 through 10. Pump 10 is always to the heat source. The other pumps may be assigned to specific zones by moving the jumper to the pins labeled with that zone number. Now we're going to assign pump speeds. Just below the zone selection is the speed selection for the pump. Assign speeds by moving a jumper to the matching pins. Set pumps as low as possible to keep your house warm. Usually those settings end up as follows. Low. This is adequate for most single loops. Medium. This is for pumps that have splitters with two loops. And max. This is for heat sources. Step 6. Final Checks. Check the water level. Add additional water or glycol mix until you reach the upper mark of the water level indicator. As a note, we recommend adding a calendar reminder to check the water level every six months. Reinstall and latch the tank cover. Caution, the water may be hot. And finally, complete a final check with the thermostats calling for heat. Check that the pump indicator lights are green or yellow, showing the appropriate pumps are working. Then, check that the hot water hoses from the water heaters to the tank are warming. They should be warm to the touch. And then, close the cover shield over the control board. Congratulations. You're done.